So here's an example of a poster that does a good job at that. We first see the title at the top, and it says Coil Gun Target Acquisition System, and it has the team who made it. And then we have the overview diagram right in the middle. And notice they have chosen to use figures with a little bit of text instead of just some text boxes. They really show how the system works together. They have a picture of the coil gun itself instead of just having it represented by a box. And then beneath it, they have a circuit diagram for those who are interested in that. And this is an electrical engineering project, so they felt like that was necessary. And then over on the left, we have all the background stuff. If that's what we want, we can get the background. If it's not what we want, we can go over and see how they did it. Their image acquisition system, which is, that's what they did. They developed this system and that allowed the gun to move to hit a target. And then we have some future stuff on the right. With on the bottom and this less desirable real estate, we have all of the, it's a timeline with all the important dates. And we do have the sponsors. They have the logos for the the group that printed it as well as the university that they're working with and the timeline continues and then if we really need uh, more basic information we know to go over to the top left where they have an introduction into what coil guns are so it's a clear poster and notice the big background picture that has been fit fuzzed out it is a large coil gun somewhere around the middle of the century so this is a good example of a poster that is clear, easy to read. They did a really good job with it. So we're almost done talking about posters. And as some final points, we need to talk about how do you go about making one. We saw some examples where people had PowerPoint presentations that they printed out, but that's not the case anymore. Most time you have a single PowerPoint slide that is large enough to um, have all of the information on it and it's printed out on a plotter. So where do you get information to make a poster this way? Well, there are lots of templates available online, free templates, purchase templates. The best website I've come across is from Swarthmore. A professor of biology, I believe, named Purin, has created a website, and it's very good. Lots of good information, and he has some templates there. I've actually created my own templates um, because of the way I read posters and the way I like to see posters. So this is an example. So what I like about this template mainly is that your eyes are drawn to two specific places. If what you want to do is read the title, then the title is very large, and it's right there at the top. It takes up a good amount of space so that your eye is drawn to it. The other place your eye is drawn is the large diagram in the center. And as we've said, people want an overview of the project so they can get the gist of it before they start launching in, talking to you, reading the rest of it. So we have the overview diagram in the middle, which would hopefully explain everything about it. Now, I should say that this is for a design project. I have another one that's for a research project, which we'll look at in a minute. But the design project um, should have a picture of the design in the center. And now we have a bunch of boxes. Those boxes would actually be figures. I've put text into them, so there's a lot more text here than would normally be in the poster. They're supposed to be figures. So what we can do is if we are drawn to that middle diagram, we can go wherever we want. For instance, if what I'm really interested in is the results, then I know intuitively, based on how we read, that the results are going to be on the right. If I don't really understand the nature of the project, I want more background information that I know I need to go to the left. And if I see something in the overview diagram and I'm interested in that, such as a recognition system, a movement system, if there's arrows going to more information, that I can just follow that information to it. 
And now notice also that there is the objective or hypothesis there at the very top. And there's also a space for literature cited. The rule follows here just as it does in every case. If you take information from a source, which means the exact words or the ideas, it must be cited. So this is one example of a template that I created based on how I think we read posters. And this is specifically for a design project. This one is for a more traditional research project where you have a hypothesis and you create an experiment or do experimental work to test the hypothesis. So notice what we see first here. We are drawn to the title at the top. If we're drawn to the figures, we're generally taken to the center. And what we see there are the results of the experiment. Um, the results are right in the center. We do um, sometimes expect results over on the right hand side but what we have over there is explanation of the results such as the implications a discussion of the results the what's going to take our attention are the results themselves and notice what's right above it is the objective hypothesis so we can skim that and just go down and we know if we want more about the methodology or more background information then we go to the left because that's how we read and if what we want are the implications, a discussion of the results, then we can go to the right. If we're more interested in something else, we can go wherever we want. What I like about these um, templates mainly is that we're not meant to read it top to bottom from left to right. We really we start in the middle and then we go where we need to. Again, the tech there's more text here than there would be in the actually the actual produced poster this one has um, text in the figure boxes so here's some examples of good templates based on um, how I think we read posters now if if you wanted to change something of course you should these templates should change according to what your project is about. Every project is different. Every um, method of reading a project is different. So please change templates as you need to. So I hope you've enjoyed this video um, that has been attempting to help you create scientific or engineering posters. I hope you found it informative. Um, remember the things we've covered, the important points. First of all, remember how we read posters. We don't read them top to bottom, left to right. Second, if it can go into a figure, do it. And that goes along with how we read them. Third, you want to practice a uh, elevator speech. You want to make sure you're able to talk about your poster very briefly. And um, fourth, Make sure you do have the important parts of your poster. You do want to have sections that explain your results. You want to have overview diagram. You do want to have some kind of background material. So um, this is it for our presentation. Hope you hope you enjoyed it, and um, be sure to ask questions. Thanks.